Hey, hey, what's going on, Passwasanapas? What up, Matt P? Oh, your pitch is in the air. Ah, it's going good. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, today we have the incredible, the wondrous Matt Hain, you guys. How you doing, Matt? Alright. Today we want to... We want to jump into your brain. We want to see how you think, how you are, how you flow. So I comprised a couple questions for you so that we can furthermore see how your brain reacts and how, how you go about okay. writing. Okay? Question okay. number one. Matt, how do you get emotionally prepared for writing? Well, uh, it's the same thing with acting. You just have to imagine uh, yourself, maybe not in a situation, but with that emotion that you're supposed to be feeling. Because we've all felt these emotions before, mm -hmm. whether it's anger, sadness, uh, frustration, fear, whatever. Root canal. You can think of a moment in your life where you felt that and you're there. Heck yeah, man. And you're so right. You nailed it. What, what I notice about your writing and your acting, of course, is that you're always there. You're always in that very moment, in that precise moment. And that's what I appreciate about you so much. And that's why you are particularly my very first interview writing partner, teacher on the fly. You're the perfect writer to me. I love the way you go about writing, and I love the way you feel about it, and I could just see it emanating from your pores. Thank you, Matt. Question number two. What is your favorite topic to write about? Um, probably um, dark subjects. Um, I like gothic horror, and, you know, Halloween is my favorite holiday and always has been and it was one of the reasons why i became an actor mm -hmm. um while other kids didn't care as much about dressing up and sort of playing the character sort of when they went to door to door they only cared about the candy i could have <laughs> cared less about the candy i cared more about being a character that is beautiful. Beautifully said, man. Now, when you did Woke and Spoke, you were one of the few writers who actually wrote their own piece. And Mother Nature has always stuck out to me as such a powerful piece. And it definitely has the wow factor. What inspired such a brilliant piece of art? I think just seeing the news and what was going on with the environment. Um, and then I thought of Mother Nature because I had done uh, a painting uh, with Mother Nature and Father Time. Cool. So I kind of combined the two ideas of the environment with Mother Nature. That is super cool. And it was also super heartfelt. You you left the crowd in complete awe, as well as the whole staff and your contemporaries. When did you first realize that you had the ability to write and to write rhymes? Um, the first uh, time I thought I had any ability to write anything. Uh, was in English class high school. Um, I mean, I, ne I didn't think that I would be a novelist, but I thought, you know, <laughs> I, I had sort of a knack for writing little things here and there. Um, but it wasn't until Performing Arts Studio West that I got into... Well, actually, no, that's not true. Um, I did write some song lyrics with a friend of mine 
Mm -hmm. um, before Performing Arts Studio West. This would have been about um, the summer of 1990. Um, so like 30 years ago, plus. Yeah. Nice, man. And um, out of, you know, the lyrics that I wrote, only one got finished into a song. And there was a sort of period of time when I thought I was going to be the singer of the band. That didn't happen. <laughs> but my lyrics and uh, along with um, my friend's uh, guitar melody and uh, solos uh, was the basis of that song. And it was um, a song called Devils in the City of Angels. Got a 45 automatic and a bottle of gin. Uh -huh. You know, you know, I'm gonna win uh -huh. this battle in the city tonight. All my homeboys are getting killed in gunfights. All of them are wondering why I died tonight. In the city of angels. Cause tonight you can't escape the night. You can't escape the night. Devils in the city of angels. Devils in the city of angels. Now it had more of a hard rock vibe to it. Um, Mixed with some rap in there too, huh? There's some rap mixed in there too. A little bit. Matt, are you? Do you feel like you're one of those writers who can, or artists who can be anything? Are you like the Sean Penn of poetry? Um, I'm pretty good with it. You are, um, man. You are sincerely. I get a lot of practice because of Joe CB's picture. This. Go, um, Joe. I'm not as good at, with the uh, substituting words on somebody else's mm -hmm. thing uh, maybe because I it's not that I can't always come up with something but I kind of you know doubt myself like oh this sucks <laughs> uh, and then it's it gets to be like a, a creatively restrictive in my opinion mm -hmm. but the picture this I just go for it and sometimes I think, well, maybe this would is better as a poem, and maybe this other one is better as a song. Good point, man. So sometimes you have to discern. They're only yeah. going to remember certain passages in a song anyway. So the more simple it is, and um, the less descriptive it is, the better. Um, because they can imagine, you can give them a little bit, it's like giving them a little taste mm -hmm. of something. Giving them a sample of a mood, or a sample of a story, mm -hmm. without giving them a novel. Man, that was that was one of the coolest takes on music and writing I've ever heard in my life. Can we can we take a moment to snap to your greatness, Matt? Can we can we snap for you and the fact that you've discovered this amazing talent and the fact that you wait you traded that mouth for wait the Adominus Rex is not behind you anymore. We noticed no, there's this, a new mouth. This is a, a design that. Um, one of my other programs worked on and it's a vampire uh, biting into a red candy apple dang and when your head jumps in front of the candy apple that it's just biting into your cheek just, uh, just yeah. like jaws yeah. just ruthless like you can go like here like <laughs> now it just looks like I'm being bit by a gigantic vampire and I move over here and then, then you can see the candy apple <laughs> You avoided it. You went from kind of a Magritte to a... Well, okay. You're pretty awesome, bro. Uh, Thanks. Seriously, I mean that. I mean that tremendously. And you remind me of uh, 
if I had to sum you up as an artist, it'd be Mary Shelley meets Slick Rick. Do you know Slick Rick? Uh, no. Slick no, Mary Rick. Shelley, no. <laughs> Although I haven't actually read the Frankenstein book, but I have uh, been listening to the Dracula novel on uh, audiobook. It's, I'm telling you, Mary Shelley, she has she has your ability to dig into the gore and the heart of a situation. You could feel the the temperature in the air, kind of like how you you made us feel all the environment and Mother Nature. You didn't leave any of that out. That's, that's very Mary Shelley-esque of you. And why I say uh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick is the storyteller of rap music. He considers himself uh, a storyteller. So uh, when you listen to Slick Rick, he, he even has a song called The Art of Storytelling. And uh, the whole time he's, uh, he's basically reading a good night story or reciting a good night story to, to, to a young boy and a young girl. And then he's, you know, he's talking about like, uh, you know, he's talking, I bought a girl a slice of pizza. Hello, nice to meet you. You know, just, uh, but he's just telling them the stories and it's kind of like, it's kid friendly, but then you dig deep into the story. It's like, dang, you know, there's some gore in there and something that you'd appreciate. So during free time, yeah. check out Slick Rick. He, he could be your brother. He could be your brother from another mother or father, but he's definitely your brother. Matt, are you ready to write yeah. Hell to the yeah. Let's write some Halloween raps. Or some Halloween some Halloween rhymes for all you slimes. So. So let's go. Let's go line by line. Rhyme by rhyme. Uh, do you want to start this baby off or you want me to start this baby off? I'm, I'm locked and loaded with a blank sheet for you. Okay. Why don't you start us off with your count. brilliance? Go for it. The dark house. The dark house. Beautiful. Ghosts. Black cats. And a mouse. Boom. So we got the dark house. Ghosts. Black cats and a mouse. Now we're on you. Uh. The dark house. Ghosts. Black cats and a mouse. Mouse. And a screeching bat stared the cat. And I fell upon the couch. The dark house, ghosts, black cats, and a mouse. And a screeching bat scared the cat. And I fell upon the couch. Rhymes on you. Rhymes on you and the slimes on you mm, mm, and the goo. Mm. Then appeared a classy ghost. A classy ghost? A classy ghost. Uh huh. Who is the most nice? Then appeared a classy ghost who is the most cool. Cool. Nice. Nice. All right, let's see what we got so far. 
the dark house, ghosts, black cats and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch, then appeared a classy ghost, who is the most cool ghoul, cool ghoul, cool ghoul, then appeared a classy ghost, who is the most cool ghoul, who is the most cool ghoul, Cool ghoul. Way too cool to be schooled. The dark house, ghosts, black cats, and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost. Who is the most? Cool ghoul, way too school. <laughs> way too cool to be schooled. Let me do it again. The dark house. Ghosts, black cats, and a mouse. And a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost. Who is the most cool ghoul? Way too cool to be schooled. Are we hot so far? We could be hotter? Yeah. Okay, bring change, the flames. Change schooled to school. Way too way too cool to be school. Way too cool for school? Way too, yeah. Way too cool for school. Beautiful. Less is more, like about, you said. Wait, wait, wait. Go uh, for I want to add something. Go way for it. Way too cool for night school. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, partner. Let's do this. The dark house, ghosts, black cats, and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost, who is the most cool ghoul, way too cool for night school. Oh, yeah. And the vampires are chilling. The vampires Outside are tight. at the pool. Nice. <laughs> Outside the bloody pool, the red pool, or just the pool? Just the pool. Outside the pool. <laughs> I get it, I get it. The dark house, ghosts, black cats, and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost, who was the most cool ghoul, way too school, way too cool for night school. And the vampires are chilling outside the pool. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, I got my next rhyme for you. Okay. So, outside the pool, no rules, blood and drool, slime and subliminal crimes. So, the whole thing, the dark horse, the dark house, the dark house, I can't even read my own script. The dark house. Ghosts, black cats, and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost, who is the most cool ghoul, way too cool for night school. And the vampires are chilling outside the pool. No rules, blood and drool, slime and subliminal crimes. Invitations were given to mimes. Oh. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> so they're all waiting at the front door. <laughs> yeah, well, they're they're just not cool enough to get up the <laughs> <Just> party. Like... <laughs> they're not even ringing the door. They're just pretending to ring. <laughs> No rules, blood and drool, slime and subliminal crimes. No invitations were given to mimes. 
What do you think? Uh, I'll do one more, and then you finish this off strong? Okay. Okay. No rules, blood and drool, slime and subliminal crimes. No invitations were given to mimes. The dark house, ghosts, black cats and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost who is the most cool ghoul, way too cool for night school. And the vampires are chilling outside the pool. No rules, blood and drool, slime and subliminal crimes. No invitations were given to mimes. There is no time for a person with no lines. They stood there sour as limes. Hell to the yes. That's good. <laughs> You're good, man. You're bringing out the best writer in me, too. Okay. You're Jordan and I'm Pippin. Don't forget that. 33-23. Okay, okay you, you want me to start off the next one? You finish this off strong. You finish this okay. off strong. I'm at the very bottom of the what paper. What was the last line? The last line was... Uh, no invitations were given to mimes. There is no time for a person with no lines. They stood there, sour as limes. So now we need the concluding sentence. Uh, okay, limes. Yes, there's a party at the old dark house tonight. Beautiful. Beautiful. Should we read our uh, masterpiece? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, go for it. There's a party at the whole old dark house tonight. Mm -hmm. It might give you a fright. When we turn out the light. Beautiful. Dang. When we turn out the lights or light? Light. Beautiful. Or lights. lights, beautiful. Yeah, I thought lights too. Hell yeah, bro. Let's read this baby. Let's read it to the world. Let them show how many are. Matt on the attack. The dark house, ghosts, black cats, and a mouse, and a screeching bat scared the cat, and I fell upon the couch. Then appeared a classy ghost, who is the most cool ghoul. Way too school, way too cool for night school, and the vampires are chilling outside the pool. No rules, blood and rule, slime and subliminal crimes. No invitations were given to mimes. There is no time for a person with no lines. They stood there sour as limes. Yes, there's a party at the old dark house tonight. It might give you a fright when we turn out the lights. Oh, they're snapping all over Long Beach right now. Oh. Ah. Uh.